Hi everyone, and welcome to Mike Likes Robots. Today we're going to be talking about Rust. I'm going to be telling you why I think people should be using it in general, why I think it should be used for robotics, and then show you how to build a ROS2 node in it that will send MQTT messages to IoT Core. The functionality is exactly the same as in my video on sending data to IoT Core. I'll link it at the top. The only difference is that we'll be using a Rust node to send it instead of a Python one. This is the Rust language homepage, which I'll link in the description. And we're here to answer the question, why would we care about Rust in particular? There's a lot of programming languages out there. Well, there's a lot more in-depth videos about the language itself, so I'll keep my description brief. Rust is a systems level language, meaning the same level as C and C++, but with a very strict compiler that blocks you from doing unsafe operations meaning very high performance, but with a greatly diminished risk of doing something low level that breaks the computer. Performance and reliability. It's also a modern language, which means it's got much more productive tools like documentation, friendly compiler error messages, integrated package managers, and so on. That's not a reason to use the language, but it sure does help. But does that description on its homepage translate to real world usage? Well, the answer is yes. We're not seeing it used everywhere, but it is being used in major locations, such as the Linux kernel, where it's the only language other than C to make its way into the kernel, and it's being used to rewrite certain Windows modules. Here's a clip from a video that talks about that a little more. Last year, the Microsoft Security Response Center published a post on why it prefers Rust for safe systems programming. Roughly 70% of the security issues that the center assigns a CVE to are memory safety issues. If the software were written in Rust, that those security issues likely would have been eliminated. We're seeing major tech companies adopting Rust, including Google, Facebook, and Amazon, among others. Dr. Werner Vogels, vice president and CTO of Amazon.com, had some choice words to say about Rust in his recent 2023 keynote. I'll let him do the talking. Now, I know the reasons why you wouldn't want to use C++ with all the security risks that there are, but there is no reason why you should not be programming in Rust. If you are considering cost and sustainability to be high priorities. So that's Rust. You might ask, why is it not being used everywhere if it's so great? Well, I've really only presented the best parts of it. The downsides are that it being a newer language and being harder to learn means it's not being used quite as widely as other languages. Being newer means less library support, less support in game engines. Having said that, I believe the language is worth learning for safety, security, and sustainability reasons. Safety and security comes from the language itself, and sustainability comes from the language being a low-level language and very performant, meaning it needs less resources and less time to do its job. That's true for robotics as much as it is for general applications. Some robot software can afford to be slow, like high-level message passing or high-level decision-making, but a lot of it needs to be real-time and high-performance, like processing LiDAR data, which gives a lot of data at very high frequencies per second. My example that I'm showing today is actually perfectly acceptable in Python because it's just message passing, which is relatively simple and non-urgent but it's a good use case for exploring how to use Rust. So let's stop talking about Rust and let's start building in it. Here we are connected to the EC2 instance that I'll be using to build the Rust node. It already has ROS2 installed because I've shown how to install that in other videos, but otherwise we'll be setting up this workspace as if from scratch. The first step is to check out the code from the GitHub repository. This is the Mike Likes Robots AWS IoT Node Rust repository, and we're just going to take HTTPS and go back to VS Code. Then we're going to create a new working directory for our workspace. Make dear ROS workspace cd into that. Make dear source and cd into that, then git clone the repository link we just copied. I'm going to move the VS Code window to come from this directory instead. Now all of our instructions will be inside the nodes readme. So first we need to make sure that Rust is installed. 
which you can do by copying this line. It pulls an installation script from the internet and runs it on the machine, and you can use the default options. Mine already has it because I can use Rust C version and it comes up with something. And I can do cargo version, which is Rust's package manager or the default package manager. You're not forced to use it, but it's so good that I've never seen anyone use anything else. Next is to install some apt dependencies, uh, a cargo dependency, and some Python dependencies. And these are needed to build ROS2 Rust, which we need to check out into the same workspace so that we can link to it. So you can just copy this entire section and paste it in. I'll avoid the step because all of these dependencies are already installed on my system. Now we need to clone the rest of the repositories. The next one is the ROS2 Rust repository. So back in the source directory, we can clone that. And the next one is the AWS sample repository for connectivity samples. And the reason we want this is because it has all of the instructions needed to build the IoT certificate that we need to authorize sending messages up into IoT Core. We'll clone this. And now we just have one further step to make sure we have all of the source code, which is that we need to use a ROS tool called VCS to import the remaining repositories for ROS2 Rust. So we can see the upper directory and then run this tool, which will check out all of the other repositories. And here we can see it's checked out another six repositories. Now to build this workspace, we can just from here use the colcon build command. Now this is building the whole of the ROS2 Rust library and it will take about 10 minutes. So let's start it off and grab a coffee and I'll see you back in about 10 minutes. Here we are back after 20 minutes rather than 10 minutes. So it does take a while to build. And actually the code I've got in the repository at the moment doesn't build correctly. Now I'll update this in the repository before I send it out, but it is a good opportunity to see the kind of error messages that Rust produces and helps us figure out what's wrong. So you can see it prints out all the lines of code, including the line number, and tells us exactly where the error is and what's wrong with a help message to help us try and figure out how to fix it. So this is the kind of help that we get building the code, which does make it easier. Let's see if we can fix it by opening up the folder and taking a look. So I'm not using GenRange correctly, and we can find that if we go to the documentation this type of documentation generation is built into Rust. You can document functions and it will build templates like this. And then when you publish your crate, which is the built version of your module, onto crates.io, it will automatically publish the documentation to docs.rs, which means that almost all crates that you use online, at least commonly used ones, will have thorough documentation with samples available. In this case, we're not meant to give it two arguments for it to generate between. Instead, we're meant to give it a range. So we can accomplish that by using two dots in between, which is the Rust syntax for generate a range. Now we'll run another build and we'll see if that passes. And after a further four minutes of building, our package built successfully. Now we're ready to run it. But I'm gonna show you another trick that you can use. Instead of having to check out ROS2 Rust into every workspace you use, I'm going to show you a trick that means you only need to build it in one workspace on the computer and then have as many other workspaces as you need. First, we need to source our setup.bash, which we can do like that. And now all of our code is available to run. But if we want to have another workspace, let's create another workspace, like um, another workspace. We'll create the source directory, which means we need dash p. And then if we jump into that, and then clone AWS IoT node Rust into that, we don't need anything else. Now to show how this trick works, I'm going to try and build that workspace first without sourcing the ROS workspace. So let's go into that and do a Colcom build. It says that it can't find the matching package named std message. So if we take a look at the cargo.toml, this is the package manager file that specifies where to find everything. 
it's just, it tells us what the binaries are and what the dependencies are. And we have this issue here, std messages can't be found. That's because it's built by ROS2 Rust. So we need to use Colcon to link them together within the same workspace. However, because we've just split across different workspaces, that's no longer working. So what we can do is source that file from the ROS workspace, then try and build again. And after 1 minute 20, we can see the same build error that we had previously before I fixed it. That would have built successfully uh, had I had that error fixed. So that's how you can split across different workspaces. Now, if this had built successfully, what we could have done is source install slash local setup dot bash. That means instead of overwriting the dependencies from the other workspace, we're adding to them. So we're essentially sourcing two workspaces at once, one with ROS2 Rust in and one with the node in that we want to run. However, in my case, I'm happy enough having everything in one workspace. So I'm going to switch back to the working case and show you it running. Let's open that readme back up. Now that we've built it once, our cargo commands work. So we can, if we want, go into cd source, IP node rust, and we can use cargo build, we can use cargo run, and it will find the dependencies within the workspace. So to make this run, you need to have already got the IoT certificate set up from the AWS IoT robot connectivity samples. I already have this, which I can check by doing echo IoT config file, and it points to the same path as always. So that's my config. My certificate file is in that folder. Everything is already set up for me. If you need to set up yourself, follow the link in the description, and I'll put it at the top again for sending ROS2 data into AWS IoT Core. That shows everything in detail about how to set it up. Or if you prefer to follow instructions, the readme in that repository will guide you through every step of the way. So now that we've built and sourced our setup, we need to source it in both of our terminals. Although for me, it's in ROS workspace, not ROS2 workspace. Now in one terminal, I can run the MQTT telemetry node, which will listen for ROS2 messages and forward them into IoT core. And then the other node, I can generate mock telemetry data to be forwarded into IoT core. Now that's running, we can see that there is data being received and being republished into IoT core using Rust instead of Python. And if we take a look at the MQTT test client, we can see that data coming in. And here we are in the MQTT test client. And now if we enter the topic filter of hash and subscribe, we can see the messages coming in exactly the same as from the Python base node, except from our Rust node instead. Now we've seen that we can build nodes in Rust, just as with C++ and Python, although we do have that extra step of building ROS2 Rust to make it happen because it's not an officially supported language. Still, using this one-time setup, we can start to build other ROS2 nodes in Rust so that they can be high performant and run on lower level systems or more resource constrained systems like Raspberry Pis or small dev kits. And we want the guarantees from the Rust compiler that the C++ compiler doesn't have. Check out the repository and give building it a try for yourself. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you in the next one.